Good afternoon and welcome to this informational webinar from the Betty Irene Moore School of Nursing at UC Davis and our Doctor of Philosophy program. I'm Rebecca Badeau. I'm Communications Director for the School of Nursing and this afternoon for about the next hour I will be serving as your MC. We want to thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedules to learn more about the Betty Irene Moore School of Nursing and our PhD program. For the next hour, we hope to highlight a bit more about what it's like to be a part of the school, why you might choose a PhD program for your advanced degree, and what makes our PhD program unique. You'll hear from faculty, a recent graduate, and we also have members of our admissions team on hand to answer any specific questions you may have about the application process. If at any time you have a question during our session today, please ask it in the Q&A. We will be taking questions toward the end, and if we don't have a chance to get to all the questions that are posed in the chat, we'll be able to um, answer those via email. I want to remind you that we are also recording today's webinar and we will share that recording with you tomorrow in a follow up email. So without further ado, I'm happy to introduce you to Dr. Janice Bell. Dr. Bell is Associate Dean for Research and Director of the PhD program. Dr. Bell. Thank you so much, Rebecca, and welcome everyone. I'm really delighted to have this opportunity to discuss our PhD program with all of you. And I'd like to share what makes our program and school truly unique. It really starts with our vision and our mission. And I wanna start with the vision. So it's optimal health and healthcare equity for all. And in enacting this vision, we've instituted a very strong focus in our school on diversity, equity, and inclusion. And this includes faculty, staff, leaders, committees who are all dedicated to supporting diversity, equity, and inclusion activities in our research, our teaching, and our service. We really value cognitive diversity and the different experiences that our students bring along with them. We're looking for students with different ways of thinking, with diverse experiences, viewpoints, and skill sets. And it's this diversity in our doctoral cohorts that really assures a rich learning experience that you can learn from one another as well as from faculty. So if we look next at our mission, it includes the words leading innovative research, and preparing leaders who advance health, transform healthcare, and ignite bold system change locally, nationally, and globally. So there are a few aspects of this that really speak to the uniqueness of our doctoral program that I'd like to touch on. First of all, we value innovation. So informatics is part of our curriculum, and we have faculty, including Dr. Taeyun Kim, that you're going to hear from soon, who conduct research in this important and rapidly developing area of nursing science. The second thing is that we prepare researchers who are ready to lead. And this includes leadership courses and content in team science that are part of the curriculum and then opportunities for student leadership while you're at the school. We also prepare re our, our researchers to enact bold system change. And here we're emphasizing implementation science. And that's the study of methods and strategies that facilitate the uptake of evidence-based practice and research into regular use. So this includes organizational theory and systems thinking. So all of these aspects of the curriculum are called out in our five core values. And the core values include community connection, which means that action is created with and relevant to our local, regional, and global communities. The second core value is diversity and inclusion, which I mentioned earlier. And this means that we affirm the voices and perspectives of people from diverse backgrounds. And this includes our students as well as the patients that we ultimately serve. The third core value is leadership and the essential skills and abilities that you need to affect change are emphasized in our curriculum for research. The fourth is innovative solutions. And this is uh, that we leverage technology and data science to advance our research. And then finally, it's collaboration. So this is all about being interdisciplinary, interprofessional, and that knowing that those partnerships are very, very important to strengthen the quality of our research. So let's let you hear from another uh, member of our faculty. Uh, we have Dr. Taeyun Kim who is with us today on the webinar. Dr. Kim is an associate professor here at the School of Nursing. She teaches, conducts research, and mentors students in the area of health informatics. So Dr. Kim, can you tell us a little bit about how you mentor doctoral students? 
Thank you, Rebecca. I'm happy to answer your question. Teaching and mentoring our doctor students is one of the critical roles we play in the school. I have worked with the doctor students as a graduate advisor, instructor, or research mentor in the school. Given my research interest in health informatics and translational research, I teach applied health informatics and doctoral seminar where students study more in depth on informatics related to research methods and proposal development for their dissertation project. Further, as a research mentor, I closely work, closely work with the students for preparation of their qualifying examination, proposal development, and completion of their dissertation project as a part of a graduation requirement. We meet regularly to discuss any questions or challenges the students might have with respect to their research project, as well as additional research opportunities. As a faculty member in the school, it's always exciting to see our students' accomplishment during their doctoral journey. So what does being a part of UC Davis and UC Davis Health afford doctoral students who are in our program? So I want to introduce you some of the opportunities that our students have. So of many opportunities, I want to address the three major opportunities from my perspective. First, students have opportunities to access the UC Davis health systems involving health professional schools, medical center, primary care network, as well as communities we serve. Again, as a part of a graduation requirement, each student should design and implement their own research project while they are in the program. In order to complete their project successfully, students require various resources and expertise from our faculty. This means they may need to access existing data sets, recruit study participants, collect quantitative and qualitative data, and analyze a complex data set in consultation with the content and methodology experts. Our students don't have a problem in accessing these resources and expertise that they need. That's based on my observation so far. And secondly, there are various funded projects and initiatives across the UC Davis Health System and main campus. Students are welcome to join one of our interprofessional research teams to learn more of our recent advancement in the field of interest and develop a research idea for their own project. We want our students to actively engage with expert scientists to, be, to become a lead investigators in the near future. Lastly, the university and health system offer a number of lectures and trainings for students so they can learn more to advance their expertise, not only in the school of nursing, but also outside the school, which includes statistics, clinical and translational research, participatory community-based research, and interprofessional education and collaboration, and so on. I know we don't have long enough in an hour to talk about all the opportunities, but that was a great high level view. I have to ask you, you've been doing research a long time. What attracted you and drew you to become faculty at the Betty Irene Moore School of Nursing? Absolutely, I wanna share my story. The short answer is our school's vision and mission. We promote has equity and has quali high quality healthcare through innovative research as guided by core values, including community connection, diversity and inclusion, leadership, innovative solutions, and collaboration. Dr. Bell already explained these core values at the beginning of this webinar. But let me tell you briefly what my research interest is, which will make it easier for you to understand how these core values are important aspects of my program research. As vast volumes of biomedical and clinical data are accumulated through clinical practice and research, the focus of my professional and academic career has been on the promotion of precision health and person-centered care using health information technologies and innovative methods. According to findings of my previous funded research, community dwelling older adults with chronic conditions such as diabetes, chronic kidney disease, and heart failure, they can maintain their functional independence when provided the tailored innovations over time. 
I utilize novel biomarkers, biomedical sensors, like a continuous glucose monitoring and activity monitoring sensors, and health technologies, including mobile applications and web-based platform, and data science methods to systematically assess their daily activities, diet intakes, and symptom experience of individuals with a chronic illness, which is needed to examine association between metabolic mechanisms, symptom trajectory, and health outcomes. In this case, physical function is one of my focus these days. In order to accomplish my research goals, I collaborate with the scientists from internal medicine, in the scope of med School of Medicine, Nutrition, Kinesiology, Physics, and Engineering. Recently, we found metabolic exercises and muscle metabolic health are important determinants of fatigue in persons with chronic kidney disease. Currently, in collaboration with these investigators, I'm developing a digital platform where individualized home-based exercise training is provided to chronically ill older adults to enhance their engagement and improve their physical function central to independent living in the community. I hope you can see now how my research is aligned with the school's mission and vision. I'm excited to be a member of our school. Well, and I always am very grateful when I come as the communications director to share stories about your research that you can break it down for me so that I can understand it. <laughs> but thank you for sharing a little bit of that with us this afternoon. Thank Dr. you, Rebecca. Kemp. Why would a nurse want to um, achieve a PhD? So there are several reasons that nurses choose to pursue a PhD. The first and the foremost is that the PhD is a research degree. So this is the highest level of nursing science and it prepares students to conduct independent research and lead teams. Students are typically research career, many but not all have worked clinic and have been thinking about questions that they want to answer and they're ready to complete. Our students also pursue PhD degrees to teach as future faculty members. Our curriculum includes the option of something called a graduate academic certificate in nursing education. And this is a three course sequence that includes innovative pedagogical models like simulation and active learning to teach you to be a good teacher in the future. Our students also want to develop leadership skills. And for some, this means a future in research related positions in health systems, in industry, nonprofit organizations, community based organizations, could be public health, other areas of government and also health policy. So there are many options. And within our program, students make their own individual paths over and above our required curriculum to reach their goals. You know, I have to ask you, both you and Dr. Kim both really talk about the core values of the school, the community connection, diversity and inclusion, leadership, innovative solutions, collaboration. How does that translate into day-to-day -day life and the experience of a student during the four years they're here? Yeah, I think Dr. Kim did a really nice job of emphasizing how value thread the person. I think that's us to some extent. I want to talk briefly about the last core value, collaboration, because we're really an interdisciplinary cohort, includes students who are interested in nursing science, but who are not nurses. Our students are, who are not nurses usually have a healthcare background, and that might be in nutrition or public health, social work, family therapy, or other experiences. And we take students straight out of the bachelor's degree, and then students who have years and years of clinical experience. So again, this diversity of experience is important to us. Our faculty are also um, about a quarter uh, who are not nurses. So that interdisciplinary nature is reflected through the whole program. We know that it takes fresh new ideas and perspectives to ignite this bold system change that we keep talking about. And this is what Betty Irene Moore had in mind when she first had the vision a little over 10 years ago to create this new school of nursing with a fresh new approach. I know when students come in um, and they start refining their, their research um, angle and, and, and what their project is going to be, this collaboration piece is really important. 
the graduate group philosophy at UC Davis, which we operate on. Is that something um, unique to us? Why, why is that so special for our students? Well, I think, again, it's back to this interdisciplinary idea that, you know, we, we don't do nursing science in a vacuum. We need collaborators from many different disciplines. Our program of research here at the Betty Irene Moore School of Nursing includes faculty who are working on individual health and healthcare, as well as those who are working at the systems level, including health policy. And within these broad areas, we've got expertise in healthy aging, in family caregiving, health informatics and technology, behavioral health, transitions of care, symptom management, and palliative end-of-life care. That's just a small kind of example of, of some of the topics that are um, a focus here, but there are many others as well. We've got expertise in both qualitative and quantitative research methods. As I mentioned, about a quarter of our research faculty are not nurses, so they're sociologists and psychologists and ethicists. And our graduate group, also, those faculty span other schools. So Faculty in, in our graduate group include School of Medicine, Public Health, Health Informatics, Graduate School of Management, Human Development, Nutrition and Statistics. So there's something for everyone. As a student here, you will have an assigned advisor who will help you from admission to navigate the program generally, to select the coursework that you need and to move your research ideas forward. And your advisor will help to introduce you to these other faculty who have common interests with you and then help you to select your dissertation committee members who will ultimately guide your work. Fantastic. Now, we've talked about it, obviously, from the faculty perspective. I want to bring in a former student perspective. Um, Dr. Cindy Matsumoto is a recent graduate of the program. Um, and I have to ask you, Dr. Matsumoto, how does it feel being called doctor? Rebecca, it's so weird. It's weird and it's really nice too. So um, hello everybody. Um, I graduated in um, the spring. I, um, uh, it, I waited, I had my dissertation done and graduation was in June. And so I waited for that day. I'm like, I think that's when I can put that on my signature line. So I changed my signature line to say, say PhD. And I was so excited. I'm like, yay. And then people started calling me Dr. Matsumoto. And I thought, wow, people really read the signature line. That's kind of crazy to me, right? So um, it felt more formal to me. I don't know if I was expecting it, um, but it definitely was a proud moment for me. Um, so I think that I want to share a couple things that I've done since graduation that the PhD has given me confidence and tools in my toolbox. Um, so I, uh, I work at the Heart and Vascular Centers at UC Davis Health, and I've always wanted to do a poster for one of the conferences. Um, so there was the Society of Thoracic Surgeons had a advancing um, uh, um, quality and outcomes conference. And so with my colleagues, we did a poster and I felt pretty confident about it because of the tools that I had learned and um, we got best poster. So that was pretty cool. Um, another thing is um, while I was in school, while I was attending classes, I um, did a summer fellowship with the Transatlantic Telehealth Research Network. And so it's great. It's a great program. Um, we went to Denmark a couple years and then the Danish folks came um, to California a couple years. And so I did that fellowship while I was going to school. And this year I helped organize the conference and I also was able to be a speaker instead of a student. So that was a great transition. So when you were looking at all of your options and you had uh, decided you wanted to pursue um, a PhD for your advanced degree, why the School of Nursing? Why this school? Why this program? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, I work at UC Davis Health, which I said, and so we would always get like alerts about um, like the things that were happening in the school. Um, and I would be like, I want to do that. I want to be a part of that. That is amazing. So I attended um, some of the functions. Um, there was a book club and some of the like the informational se se um, sessions. And I just thought, you know, I really, really want to be a part of that. And what we've talked about so far about the vision and the mission, it just aligned with where I wanted to go. Um, and um, I, on the practical side, I wanted to do a PhD because I do a lot of like quality improvement studies, yet I don't, I can't um, conduct that research and disseminate those findings. So that's what I really wanted to do. 
Yeah, you know, we keep talking about the wonderful information that's found on our website and, and what people, um, they believe healthcare can be better and they're drawn to our vision and mission. Once you actually started as a student, what was the experience of what was different about this school? What was special? What, what made it unique in, in your experiences? Yeah, so um, the, um, Dr. Bell was talking about the, the, the faculty and the qualitative and the quantitative research, and we learn all that, and we apply it, and that's really important. Um, I think that um, I, I have too many aha moments and times where my mo mind was completely blown in like a good way, right? Um, and th I think the one thing that really stands out to me um, is the multidisciplinary teams. So um, working in multidisciplinary teams um, reiterates the importance of healthcare as a team sport, right? It's not our responsibility to do everything. It's our responsibility to rely on everybody to make sure that the patient and their families receive the best care that they can receive. So I think that that focus at UC Davis, um, the Betty Ray Moore School of Nursing is fantastic. Okay, so my final question, you got the PhD, what's next? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, so I'm excited to say that I'm participating in a project with Dr. Kathy Kim and it's called Activate. And it's a project to bring telehealth to the Central Valley so we are partnering with um, uh, community health centers, in this case, Livingston Community Health um, in Livingston, California. And we are working to bring telehealth um, uh, to vulnerable populations and to make health equitable. So, I mean, when I applied for school, this is like the best, um, the best fit for everything that I wanted to do um, to when I intended, when I joined. Well, and the nuance now, telehealth more important than ever in, in this time of a pandemic. So um, you're really putting this PhD to work. I am, I am. Well, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts. Stand by, some students may wanna have a, a personal firsthand um, Great, thank uh, experience. you. Um, so, um, Dr. Bell, um, before we get to Q&A, I know that we're going to have some um, questions and I want to encourage all of you watching to, to submit some of those questions if they're burning in your minds right now. Um, but briefly tell us, Dr. Bell, about applying to the program. Yeah, so applications for 2021 enrollment in our program are now open and you can go to the website for all the specific details. Um, I'm just going to share a few details now. So the program is full time and it includes uh, core courses, elective courses, and a dissertation, and then there's a seminar that threads through each of the four years. The classes are held in fall, winter, and spring, but students still do work to move their dissertations forward in the summer, and you should expect to be on campus at least three days a week, and that varies from quarter to quarter. Most of our School of Nursing courses are held on Thursdays and Fridays, but electives in other departments can be any day of the week. Right now, with the pandemic, all of our classes are virtual. Some of that work is synchronous, where you're online like this with your class and your instructor, but some of it is asynchronous, where you can complete um, some of the coursework on your own schedule. So, um, should we talk about move the? Did, did, is that the admission requirements? Yeah. So perfect. Yes. So we're looking for a bachelor's degree, um, at least a GPA of 3.0. We don't ask for GRE scores. You need three letters of recommendation and I would say for that one it's good to sort of manage that process and make sure that your referees are writing you the strong letter and that you've got a nice um, sort of reflection of people that you know from your prior academic work. And then uh, you will write a statement of purpose, a personal history, a research professional history and future goals. And in that you would be sort of trying to link up your interests with ours and um, with our strengths. The application process might require an interview and um, the, the website has uh, all the details if you're um, applying in, from internationally. Okay, so um, as the questions come in, I've, I've got one right here and this is one we get a lot. Can working nurses complete this full-time program while still working? 
So that really depends on the student and it depends on the flexibility of their job. We do have students who are able to adjust a work schedule each quarter to allow them to do the coursework. But it's really important to note that the uh, schedules vary every quarter and by your interests. So you just don't know what your, your schedule is going to be until um, the quarter is, is coming up. So there may be times that you have to be available on weekends and evenings. And importantly, being a PhD student is a full-time job. So there's significant time required to complete the program outside of just classroom time. So part-time flexible work is the best option if you must continue working, but you'll still um, have to work through these competing demands. It seems like every quarter, everything is due at the same time. And if you're trying to ba balance that and juggle work as well, um, that can sometimes be a pitfall. But certainly uh, flexibility in your work schedule will be a key component of that. And can you reiterate the days again that classes are held? Um, well, they could be held asking... every, every single day of the week, but most of the School of Nursing required classes tend to cluster, tend to cluster on Thursdays and Fridays. But that doesn't mean that there aren't classes on Wednesdays or Tuesdays or Mondays. I mean, it can be every single day of the week. And everybody's schedule in the first couple of quarters is lockstep. You're all taking the same classes. And then toward the end of the first year, you're starting to take electives and going in different directions from others in your cohort. And some of the classes over on the main campus could be held, you know, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So um, it's really uh, kind of potluck and it depends on the quarter. Okay, um, I'll first pose this question to you, Dr. Bell, but Dr. Matsumoto might want to chime in. How should a prospective student prepare themselves to succeed in this journey? I think that the students who are the most successful come in with a very nice idea of what they want to study and have not necessarily a fully baked research question, but a, certainly an area of research that they're passionate about. I think students struggle the most when they're switching topics and spending that first year not working on something specifically. There are opportunities right from the first quarter to begin to go deep in your area. And if you haven't identified that area yet, that's what makes it challenging. So I would say that is certainly um, one piece of, of success. Dr. Matsumoto, do you have any ad advice for um, succeeding in the program? Um, <clears throat> pretty much you need support from your entire social network. You need everybody to be on board that you are going to be spending four years really delving into a topic, which means that you might not see them as often, right? You, you really need to get everything else in order before you, you uh, embark on this journey, I think. Very good advice. Um, Dr. Bell, have students ever completed the program in under four years? Yes, we have had students, we had someone complete in three, and it was really very, very difficult. Um, the John for a three completion time, I think she found that quite difficult to get it. Um, so I would say it's definitely possible. And again, if you come in with your ideas sort of ready to go, that can give you that um, a little bit extra impetus to get get through quicker. And we certainly don't require you to stay for four years. At the same time, there are sometimes last longer than four years. Um, but the, most, I would say, uh, the normative time for completion of our program is, is four years, and that, that's typically the 12 quarters. Okay. Can you go over um, who are some of the best recommenders in writing those three letters of recommendation? Yeah, I think you want you want academic references, if possible, or um, very recent em employers who have advanced degrees, masters or PhD. Um, you probably don't want a recommendation from a friend, even though they could probably give you a nice recommendation. I don't think that would be looked upon as um, professional. So you're looking for people who ideally can speak to your potential for future independent research. 
Great. I want to mention to those of you watching, if you have any specific details on actually how to apply in that admissions process, Madeline Verzola, our manager for admissions, student services and outreach is on the webinar with us and she can chime in and, and assist with um, some of those questions if you have them. Um, Dr. Bell, can you speak to financial support? Yeah, so we've always provided generous funding to our doctoral students and that will continue um, for the next admitted cohort. Uh, the financial offers are made after the interviews in winter quarter and exact funding amounts or offers will be announced at that time. So I don't have the exact amount, but um, there is there would be um, financial support um, offered to all who are admitted. Good to know. I see another um, question coming in. Uh, what is the best way to go about finding a faculty mentor and which faculty are taking PhD advisees? So the website is the first place that I suggest people go. So here you can explore more about specific research projects, faculty research interests and researchers. And you're looking for faculty in the nursing science and healthcare leadership graduate group. So you'll see that not all of them are School of Nursing faculty. Some of them have home departments, as I mentioned before, in medicine or nutrition and other, other schools and colleges. So when you read the faculty bio, you're looking for things that click with your own research interests. And then if you go to our, um, there's a, a web address for the um, student services team, they can help direct you to people who have common interests with yours. And just reaching out to ask people or faculty if they're willing to speak with you um, is another way to find out, you know, sort of how your research interests connect. And we can help you to do that. So I think that address is in your chat box now. Right. Well, what if you don't have an extensive research background? Uh, in terms of finding faculty to talk to or I think in terms Coming of to the way, program. just applying to the program and embarking upon a, a doctoral journey. Yeah, so I think we have have students admitted with a lot of research experience and no research experience. And we start right at the beginning. So you start um, in your fall quarter with an introduction to statistics that assumes that you haven't taken statistics for a long time. And so we begin there. And then we move rapidly through um, to getting into more advanced statistical um, classes. And the same with qualitative methods. We start with an introduction class and then we move from there. And then certainly there are opportunities as a graduate student uh, researcher to work with faculty closely and get more research experience while you're a student. Um, that would be an option for uh, if you didn't have a job already, because those are typically 50% positions that you might. Um, that it could be somebody outside of our school who's hiring for those positions. So those are opportunities. And then um, you have also got opportunities to work with faculty who have uh, ongoing research and try to um, join their research teams. And that, that could be a way of beginning um, to, to work toward a dissertation project in collaboration with your advisor. Okay, can faculty from other universities be part of a student's committee? And I'm thinking that's probably a dissertation committee. Yeah, we, we encourage that. In fact, 90% or more of our students have one external member on their committee. I don't think you can have more than one, but um, we like the idea of uh, it, certainly interdisciplinary and then bringing in experts like the, you know, experts who are um, leading in, in the field that you're interested in. And if you have those connections or, or students will make those connections while they're with us. And uh, we like uh, dissertation members who are from other universities. Um, is there anyone that, that has been one of the ones that have seemed the most out, out in left field to you over the years that just complemented the rest of the work perfectly? Well, I'm thinking of one where, you know, that external member uh, who is an expert in um, family violence in families um, is currently working with the student who had her on their committee on a uh, an R01 from NIH now. So they continue to be collaborators after gra after the student graduated. And um, it's been it'll, it'll be a lifelong research relationship. So I think it can be very important for both uh, the student and the committee to get that outside perspective. 
in addition to obviously serving on the committee as a student nears dissertation and, and, and completion of the program, in those early years uh, of the program, the, the mentoring and the advising that faculty provide, um, is there anything outside of just the research interest that you were bringing um, and, and exposing students to in order to make those connections um, and make you know, their professionalism that much stronger? Yeah, so when, when uh, students are admitted, they're assigned an advisor right from the first quarter. And that person remains with you through the whole program. And they may not be your dissertation mentor. They're just, um, they're your advisor who will walk with you as you choose your electives, as you choose your dissertation committee members, as you choose extracurricular activities in professional organizations that will help move your science forward. So that person is always there for you as a resource. And then you may discover after a few uh, quarters that there's somebody else that you're going to end up working with for your research closely. And that person would be your dissertation chair or, or primary research mentor. But your advisor is still there that you can you still um, get advice from that person all the way through and they sign all of your papers until you're graduated. You're certainly not walking through it alone. We've got the details up once again, showing you our timeline, our contact information, and, and some resources that are uh, available to you as you um, embark upon the application journey before um, the four years of the doctoral program. Uh, we do wanna remind you that we are recording this session. We will send you a follow-up email with that. We also hope that you'll stay on and complete a little survey about the webinar. That'll help us improve our webinars in the future. Um, Dr. Bell, do you have any just last words of wisdom um, as folks start um, mapping out their future? Yes, I want to recognize that our world is very different right now with the impact of COVID-19 and a lot of the other issues that we're facing together as a society. And I think that we need nurses as scientists and leaders in health research now more than ever before. And we've got a faculty team here who's committed to support all of our students in their doctoral journey. I encourage all of you to continue to explore how you can join us in our vision of optimal health and healthcare quality, equity for all. So I thank everybody. I thank you, Dr. Bell, Dr. Kim, Dr. Matsumoto, and our team behind the scenes. We thank you all for joining us. Um, and thank you for taking time out of your schedule to see if the Betty Irene Moore School of Nursing at UC Davis might be the right fit for you as you prepare to make a real impact in healthcare and take your, your research and your career where you hope it will go. Uh, if you don't fill out the survey today, if you don't have time, the email tomorrow will have a link to our survey as well, uh, as, long, as well as the, um, the recording. And again, as Dr. Bell mentioned, our faculty, our admissions staff, our entire team is standing by ready to answer any question you have and help guide you through the process. So thank you for joining us. We hope you stay well and we wish you best of luck on wherever your academic and professional adventures take you. Have a great day.